But first, earlier this week, a little story caught my eye, which was Ben Wallace talking about tanks going back into Germany. And it sparked a much, much wider reaction in my funny little brain. So let me take you back. In March of this year, the Defence Review saw a smarter, intelligence and cyber-driven military to meet the real threats of the day and the immediate future to the UK. As was observed then, and I quote, older conventional hardware in the MOD's infantry took a hit as the military cut programmes to better afford a pivot toward high-tech acquisitions in the fields of space, cyber, unmanned vehicles and artificial intelligence, among other advanced capabilities, close quote. So, the old days of squadrons of tanks deployed in Germany to roll across the northern plains, taking on a Soviet invasion, are long since gone. Royal Air Force V-bombers with nuclear weapons in their bellies, ready to rain hell upon the Soviet Union at four minutes' notice, are also gone. Sleek. Silent submarines with trident nuclear missiles cruise the depths holding today's nuclear deterrent. Pilots sit in bunkers in Lincolnshire, flying drones in the Middle East, reporting on the activities of Islamist terrorists and ready to take them out at a moment's notice. And today's soldiers are just as likely to be seen giving Covid jabs or shoring up communities under threat of flooding as they are to be seen on a shooting range or scurrying across Salisbury Plain in full combat gear. But then, where I started. A couple of days ago, the Defence Secretary Ben Wallace published Future Soldier, a knock-on from that Spring Defence Review. He shrunk the army to its smallest since Wellington saw off Napoleon at Waterloo. But he sang the praises of the Reserve Army, which helped push the available total to about 100,000. But more significantly, he confirmed the return of tanks to Germany about a year since they were withdrawn. Soldiers were deployed to Poland to help an ally against the migrant threat stirred up by Belarus. Russia marshalling an army on her border with Ukraine, also gave a good old-fashioned conventional wake-up call to the West. As military types will tell you, defence is a fluid thing. Assess the enemy, assess what he's up to, and act accordingly. What was the Soviet Union is now Russia, and her chums, and Russia herself, and many independent nations. So the threat's different but Russia still fancies her chances, with Belarus as a surrogate causing that trouble over migration, or more directly, in Ukraine, threatening an armed invasion over Crimea. So it chops and changes, and so does policy and strategy. Part of NATO, which is sandwiched between Russia, more of a rogue state than anything, with territorial ambitions and an appetite for disruption, and China, a more sophisticated much wealthier, rich and ambitious state, and the masters of cyber war, the UK is now a smaller player, but a player nevertheless. The taxpayer funds billions a year on defence, from mighty aircraft carriers with fleets of costly new aircraft to squaddies, answering the call from fighting Ebola in Africa to giving the anti-Covid jab effort a helping hand. Now, it's said the most important function of any government is the defence of the nation and her people. So, given mixed signals from government and not insignificant amounts of money, we are asking today what our defence policy should be. What are we defending and how? Do you feel threatened? And if so, by whom?